Meg Whitman certainly has her work cut out for her. The former eBay CEO will be taking over a company in turmoil, one in the midst of a big acquisition, autonomy. So what's it like to be acquired by Meg Whitman? Let's ask someone in the know. Our next guest joined PayPal in 1999 and was COO until it was bought by Whitman's eBay. David Sachs is now CEO of Yammer, a company that establishes a secure social network for company communications. David, thanks so much uh, for joining yeah, us here, here on Bloomberg West. So you were the COO mm -hmm. of PayPal until right. eBay bought it. So obviously you were involved with these negotiations right. with Meg Whitman. What is she like mm -hmm. and what kind of a leader do you expect she will right. be? Well, you know, I competed against Meg. I didn't really work for Meg, but, uh, but I did, you know, have some interactions with her. Um, you know, I think she's very tough, very competitive. Um, I think her expertise really lies in marketing. She's a very skillful presenter. Um, you know, I don't think she'll be pushed around by the board. I think she will tame that board. I think the, uh, the, the question I think probably on most people's minds is she's not really a technologist and this is a sort of a deep technology company and you know, how will she, she deal with that? Exactly. I mean, maybe she's a great leader, but can she fix a company that, to be fair, is as messed up as HP? I think the question is, why does she want this job? You know, she's already had a very successful run as the CEO of a major Silicon Valley company. Uh, she has all the money she needs. You know, she's a billionaire, and this company is kind of uh, a basket case. And the question is, can anyone really turn it around? You know, one of the things about tech is that it moves so fast that by the time you realize you've got the wrong strategy, it's frequently too late to do anything about it. So I think she's taking a pretty big sort of personal risk taking this on. And I guess, you know, maybe she still feels like she has something to prove. Um, you know, when she was CEO of eBay, one of the statements that kind of came back to haunt her is that she said that eBay's model was so great that even a, a monkey could run this company. And I think people, you know, haven't, have sometimes not given her credit for eBay because the model was so great. And so I think, you know, if she can turn around HP, it would really be, I think, um, a feather in her cap. I think it would put her in the pantheon of great Silicon Valley CEOs, and maybe she wants that challenge. Yeah, or maybe she do something with a burning bush, too. That'll be an amazing thing to see. Um, <laughs> the, you mentioned basket cases. I don't know that Groupon's in that category, but uh, it's just breaking news just now. You were a COO. Now, here's a company that can't seem to keep a COO. Hewlett Packard doesn't have a COO. What does a COO do? What, what kind of company needs one? Right. Well, I think every COO has sort of a sui generis relationship with the CEO, and they kind of have to divvy up the responsibilities. And so, you know, at, at PayPal, I work closely with the CEO, Peter Thiel. We had a very good relationship, and uh, he focused on sort of high-level strategy, external issues, finance. I focused on the operations and sort of product development of the company. And so I think, you know, the partnership has to be there. And uh, it's hard for me. I don't know the personalities involved in, at, at Groupon, but... Is it typical uh, when an executive yeah. chairman is involved as opposed to a chairman, right? If there's also sort of a, a senior CEO and a junior CEO and then a COO, is that the kind of arrangement that doesn't that, that would be work? unusual. I don't know if that's the case there, but that would certainly be unusual. Um, you know, what I will say is that these fast-growing startups, which, you know, going through hypergrowth the right. way that Groupon or pay, you know, PayPal did, they're very stressful places to work. It's a crucible. And when things don't fit, uh, you see changes and so it's not actually a bad thing if it's not working and they're changing well, it because it's not six working. Months, I mean, yeah. it so says it's hard, something. It's hard for me to know exactly, but uh, but you know this is the, the type of change that you see when a company is going through hyper growth. How big a blow is it for Groupon to lose the person at least who has the title of COO right mm -hmm. before an IPO? I think long term these types of things don't matter, but um, in the short term because they're in a quiet period and they can't really explain what's happening, uh, people can always uh, interpret the worst. And so, uh, you know, I think they've kind of got uh, one arm tied behind their back right now because of the quiet period. Well, and, and uh, although throughout the quiet period there's been a lot of communication coming out of the company. I mean, they, they when Chairman Eric Lovkowski, Executive Chairman Lovkowski called me to say they were going to be wildly profitable, then that ends up in the next S1 filing when there's an email leaked. Right. That ends up in an S1 filing. So they found ways to talk right. throughout that process. Right. Well, I guess uh, the founder, CEO, sent an a, a email to the company kind of explaining things to employees. So it wasn't a public statement, but then, like you said, it leaked. And then that, that's created, um, that's created you know, sort of issues for them with the IPO. But I, I will, the one thing I will say in their defense is that it's very um, annoying. And uh, when you know, people can right. kind of badmouth right. you at will and you just can't, can't respond. We went through that at PayPal before our quiet period where all of a sudden you get hit by strike lawsuits. Um, anybody who's got a grievance or claim against you comes out of the woodwork and you just can't respond. And that's uh, very frustrating. So, so I am. Or I mean, is, is the plan <laughs> to go public? Is the plan to go through that all again? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a good question. You know, right now we're just focused on growing the business and we figure that, you know, the exit will take care of itself.
All right. But Dave yeah, I think you know the goal would be long term to, to try and create a great standalone company. All right, David Sachs, CEO of Yammer, thanks for sharing Absolutely. all that backstory here with Absolutely. us. Really great to hear your perspective on that.